Hello Moonshiners, this is Chris Kelly from Rocky Point Copper Stills. I'm filming this now just in case my Facebook doesn't work. I work out of a metal shop, so uh, sometimes we lose reception when I get in too close. I promised I'd show you how to make a copper head, copper pot head for your moonshine still. I'm just going to give you the basics. I'm not going to drag you through my tigging and cutting and so on and so forth. But I'm going to try to show you and help you save uh, as much money as you can in your next endeavor trying to make a still or try to do the math for making a head if you have your copper sheets. I'm starting off with a full sheet here and showing you just some basics. If you wouldn't make a can for say, uh, as be the same thing as being doing this head, I've got two different sizes. I've got a can over here and I've got a head that's just a shorter strip that I'm gonna use, same, same circumference. So anyway, if you have a three by eight sheet, uh, the ones I get are just a little bit over 96 inches, They're usually about 96 and eight. But by the time I cut them into the six sections here, you see 12 inches on height each, pretty much minus what your deduct is for your cutting tool, and uh, 48 inches and somewhere around a 16th long. By the time I actually put that through a roller, if I'm using a rolling machine, it'll grow a little bit. It ends up being closer to like about uh, 48 and a quarter. But anyway, if you do this with your single sheet of a three by eight, you'll end up getting a 9.5 gallon still. You can see a big 12 inch height there. And it's approximately a 15 and a quarter inch diameter with a circumference of 48.25. It's really 48.27, but we're gonna round it off to 48.25, I do believe. Uh, and of course, like I said, this grew a little bit due to the heat from heating up that as you roll it, uh, not from the torch. Uh, and then if you go in here and look at your bottom here, like I say again here, you're gonna have, uh, or not your bottom, your your top here. This is how we're gonna do your top. So now you, you see you've gone from a sheet to having four sections of 9.5 gallon cans. You roll them, you do your seam together, you get your 15.25 uh, 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 diameter, and uh, then you come to your uh, your next sheet. You're gonna have a sheet now for your the, to your top and bottom to this, this pot head. And to save money and time again, I'm trying to show you the easy way to do it. Since it is about 36 inches across and 48 point, what, I mean 96 point whatever uh, uh, in length, uh, it really comes out easy and nice on the math if you cut that sheet in half and have two 18s on each side. So you'll have 18 heads, you know, you'll get 18 heads, a little bit over at the end here, but you'll have multiple tops here as you can see out of just a single sheet. Uh, you'll get a total of 10 of them here and some extra. So uh, after you've cut these out and you now have this new piece here that's larger than the circumference of your can, as you can tell, because we cut this, as you can see in 48, this circumference ends up being about 46 and 5 eighths. So 18 inch diameter, 9 inch radius, we're getting a 56 and 5 eighths circumference. We'll take this number here and we're going to divide it with a number, another number to get that pie shape we're going to cut out here. But before we do that, I want you to understand here that it's really hard to do a seam to seam direct on these cans. And I don't suggest doing it. It's a pain in the butt. I'm not real good at it myself. I want to be a little bit over on my lip so that when I flip this thing over and try to attach the can to the, the top itself, I've got a little ledge here to lay that silver in. So I don't want a quarter inch lip on each side, which will increase my radius a total of a total of a half inch. We're gonna get a half inch extra for that lip, okay? So as you see here, I came back again here and I added a half inch to the radius. There was the can. This is what's needed. And now we're gonna multiply that by pi and get our new circumference. This circumference here is divided by the circumference here and it'll leave you a pi of seven and one eighth inches. As you can see, I've sort of taken it easy on you and made it easy for looking. There you go. All I did is start this point and measure around here, and it doesn't matter as long as you're pretty decent on your cut. There you go. There's your pie shape. By the time this is put together to make it look like this, you have just a quarter inch extra all the way around. So what do I do then? Well, I'm going to go back up a little bit. In order to make a really nice cone, you just don't come to the center here and take you a cut out and think that you're gonna get a nice cut and a nice point. 
actually when you sweat this seam it's also going to grow a little bit just like your can does so what you do is is you take that center and you'll find that the actual true center of my hole is just up here a little bit reason being is is I want something to be able to cut a nice line and end up being the size of my cutter. And my cutter tooth happens to be the size of this drill bit here. So obviously I came over here and had a starting point. I marked it and I circled around and I marked it for my seven and one eight. But what about cutting up into here? Well, you don't want to come up here and have two jagged cuts and then you end up being your center point being way up in here. And then on top of this growing when you sweat it, you put your can up here and your point's way over here when it's already been up. So this is the actual center. I drill out the hole a little bit below the center and cut it out to each outside edge of that hole. So when I do bring it around and make a cone out of it, I'm creasing way back up here near the actual center because that's gonna to want to fold and crease back up into there. And as you can see here, that's pretty much what's going on with this right here when you, when you cut that piece of pie out right there. You can see the, the, the about the size of either side of that blade when I cut which ends up being like I said this right here and just to show you I'm not lying if you want to measure it around you can start on one end here I use a typical fabric tape start at your seam come around hold it where you began you don't have to be absolutely perfect for this but you can see there you go just, just under 50 inches like we were saying. 49 and a half is good. That's what it really is. All right, well you wanna know, how did I attach that to something else now? Well, how are you gonna attach all this together? How are you gonna make this head? I usually have something to prop with, like this uh, ferrule here. I'll stick this top in here. I'll line the seams up, stick in here. You can tell I picked it, I cheated on you a little bit. I took this to a Pexto shit machine I got right over there. If I uh, wouldn't do this by myself, I'd show you the whole deal. If I Pexto to seam all the way around it, which I knew was about a quarter inch in, which then again, I knew this rim would fit very nicely into, as you can see. And uh, what I do from there is usually I put another plate on top of it, put pressure on it, and sweat all the way around here. All right, after I'm done there, guess what? I flip it over again, by golly. And I do the same thing. Of course, I'm gonna get that seam straight. And even if, you know, once you've got it over there, you can put weight on it. I usually put a weight on it and it centers up pretty good and smash it down. There you go. A finished product like this. Uh, if you attach an eight inch ferrule to it, pull it quite a bit. Like the one I have in my hands right here. Okay. Like this. There you go, there's the seams. There's the top. That was the bottom before I cut it out. Put your port on the side, any size you want for a line, line arm, a worm, jump over to a thumper, whatever else you need. There you go.